G'day and welcome to Harry Houdini Models, right? Rename the channel. It's a lot easier to find now. Now, we're back with the Arizona, right? Now this is a very, very popular series of videos on my channel, okay? And um, I have been getting on. There's been a lot that I needed to do to this. And I have been spending the weekend um, working on getting some photo etching and there was a great big storm in the middle of it and I had to take a break and I've had to come back later on and finish it but that's all in this video. Now um, as I said very popular there's over 5,000 views now on the Arizona series and you guys seem to really enjoy it and I get a lot of requests when am I going to do some more you know I'm on it I'm on it I'm on it I've done quite a lot and we're really making ground at last. Now sadly um, although we've nearly got 1,000 subscribers there's there's one out there that's not very happy he, he said I waffle too much and I stray off the subject. <laughs> Have you watched my videos? That's all I ever do. All I ever do is waffle and stray off the subject. That's my style. That's what I do. You're not paying me. It's my channel. I'll do whatever bloody hell I want. Alrighty? All I want to do is share my modelling and show them the fun of doing it. Okay? It's not a fact by fact instruction. There might be a little bit of stuff you could learn here and there and that's good and I try and show you what I do. But basically, this is my platform to waffle. And I can go off subject as much as I like, all right? So, if you don't like it, vote with your feet. Piss off! <laughs> the rest of you, who I know enjoy my style and my way of doing things, and that's what my channel is really all about. It's just about me having fun building models, all right? So if you're happy to stay around for that, and you know, and you can weather through the waffle, then um, stay tuned now, because I'm going to get on and get some more work done on my Arizona. So here's what we're going to solve in this video, and it's the problem with this kit. See there's some horrible join here. Absolutely dreadful the way they've done it. I mean, it's just absurd. And, um, and the portholes don't line up, and you'd, you'd be filling and faffing around, and that would just... It would drive you bonkers. But there's a solution, and there's an easy solution, and it's provided by that Edward photo etch. Look at that. Isn't that so much prettier? So I'm going to show you how I achieved that. And it's not that hard. You've just got to have your wits about you and follow the instructions. And um, the, um, the turrets are just in there for um, just to double check the fit as I went. But that is 100% better than what we had on the other side. And once I'd done that, those portholes look so lovely that these, um, as by the kit, they look a bit dull by comparison. So I went through on this side and I drilled out all of these, right? So now these portholes drilled out and they match nicely the portholes there in the photo etch and I'm yet to do these. So I thought I'd just show you how easy it is to do those portholes. Now one way to do it is to use this thing, it's called a pin vise. And it's, it's very handy because you can put tiny little drill bits in, right? You can even put pins in there really and then tighten that up and then you can basically by putting pressure on the end of it, you can turn it, and it's a drill. So, usually with these battleship kits, they have a little indentation where the portholes are. So that makes life fairly easy. If you pick the right size, okay, so I'd already measured this, and I know that it is the correct size, as I place it in there, whoop. And um, then all you've got to do is place it on one that hasn't been drilled out yet, and drill it in. Now, a little tip for that, it works a lot better if you make sure this is nice and firm. If you try and do everything in the mid-air, you're going to wobble all around and your hole will end up an oval shape. So, as you saw there when I was trying to just stick it in that hole there, how, how much mucking around. So locate it, right? then get your hull down on something solid, right? and then get yourself nice and perpendicular. Notice I'm not like this or like this. Perpendicular, and that, that especially when you you get round to like the bow, right? You're going to want to go in always perpendicular, and some of these little portholes here, always perpendicular. That makes it makes your hole much better. So again, perpendicular, cross from there, pressure on the pin vise, and all you have to do is turn. And the thing is, the whole indentation that they've put there for you to just put a bit of weathering in. Well, that's a locating. Um, that's just a locating point. And if you've got exactly the right size pin vise, drill bit, away it goes. Now, what I do next is, to make sure there's no burring, no rubbish there, is I simply run my nail over it. 
oh, which takes off any burring. And then I use a toothpick, or some people call them cocktail sticks, I think, toothpick. And I pop that in, and that basically helps get rid of any rubbish that's there. And then I might have to go back again and just fingernail it and re-toothpick it. And there you go. And if you noticed before, there was a bit of burring there because I mucked around with the, um, the drill bit before. And it's gone, and it's as easy as that, all right? Voila, and if you can see, these are not drilled out, and these are. And how much better are they? And literally, it took me about 15 minutes to do that side. There was about 45 holes. There'll be 45 holes to do there. There's 90 all up on one side. So it's about half an hour each side, which you just, you can do it while you're watching TV. It's not that hard. You just, you can sit there, you know, watch your favourite movie, put on the, you know, your favourite episode of Astro Boy. <laughs> and, um, or Skippy. What's that, Skip? Battleship needs the holes drilled out. Oh, and Sonny's fallen down a mile. And, and he's abducted by aliens. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> yes, oh, I'll skip you the kangaroo. Right, well, look, I'll get on with this because I'll get all the portholes done and then I'll show you the most important bit, which is how do we get all those little photo etchy parts on there without going start raving crazy. And there is a method and there are some pitfalls and I'll go into all of that and I'll show you how. Here we have Edward's instructions for replacing those little bulkheads there along the side between the, um, the upper mid-deck and the lower mid-deck. Now they don't give you a lot of clues, I mean there's just a few pictures there of the, um, the bits of brass photo etch and earlier on they, they, did, um, they did sort of say remove, remove the plastic because that's going to get in the way. Right. Now I found you didn't have to remove as much plastic as they said and in fact I removed too much. Um, what I found is there's plastic here that basically you can pretty well leave in place although you've got to watch out for where these doors are. Um, so as long as you leave room for those doors to get through you've just got to cut a little bit out. But I wanted to keep these retaining pins. There's a pin there, there's a pin here and there's a pin here which would help lock this to the um, to the lower deck because you've got the pinhole here, pinhole here and pinhole here. So I wanted to retain that functionality so that it would hold itself together. So I first did what Edward said and I started removing these bits and there was no need. I found that that was sort of pointless. In fact what you really needed is you needed to get rid of the bottom ones. That's where the magic is. You need to get rid of those. Because I tried to see if there's a way to leave the bottom pieces in and push the photo etch up and no it doesn't work you, you you have to suck it in and go for it and rip it all out now I took out this one there's no need for that I found later on because strangely enough the um, this photo etch part here I don't know if you can tell it goes out and around okay so that you end up see if I can get this one it ends up flush with the end there whereas if you have a look whoops Oh, it's always hard banging everything. If you have a look here, for some reason, the kit's plastic is indented underneath the edge of that deck. All right, and so Edward solves that problem because apparently that's not supposed to be that way. That's another mistake. So Edward is going to replace all these horrible gunky joins and misaligned portholes and fix this bit here, which should come out and be flush. It also takes this part here and brings it up flush with the edge of the deck as well. And apparently that's how it should look, at least in the guise that I'm going to do for this version of the Arizona. And you'll notice there, there's even horrible bits of burring and rubbish in there, which is part of the kit. That's not dust or anything, that's actually a bad bit of moulding. It looks like someone's shit in there, it looks like a whole lot of hobos crawled along the plank there and cracked all along the edge. <laughs> I tell you, it's dreadful. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to be very brave now. We need to know what part we've got to remove. now. We're going to have to take out this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I'm going to leave that one this time. I took it out last time. I don't need to. How do you take them out? How do you do it without wrecking everything? Well, the lucky part is I've got... Um, can you hear that rain? It's absolutely pelting down here today. I have this deck will be covered with a wood veneer. All right? So um, this lovely artwork's wood veneer, which I've taken out and put back in its container for the moment uh, because it is so wet and humid here, this was starting to curl on the model. So I've taken that out just for this process and also so I don't wreck it while I'm cutting out pieces. I had it in for dry fit, have a look. Okay, see in this picture I dry fitted 
the um, photo etch with the plastic with the wood deck in to make sure everything would fit together. But now that I've done that and I can see what goes where, I'm, I'm much more confident with the other side. So, to take these out, all right, we'll take this one out. That's probably one of the easiest ones. Take my spread cutters, and this is what I found was his method, is just cut very small pieces off. Not just vertically, cut, 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 cut. Now they won't all fall off, but especially with my sprue cutters, because these are my little micro shear ones, they do a wonderful job of um, cutting things without it popping everywhere. Alright, now that that's done, what we're going to do, see if I can get my hand around here, so you can see what I can see, is you can only get it in diagonally, but you can go that way, that way, alright, and you can come back the other way. So you can see there's not much left now, and it's pretty easy to get in there with your sprue cutters pretty well level. Now I'm not too worried about scratching in here, that'll never be seen. And I'm not too worried about scratching my deck planking because I've got that wood veneer to go in, and that will um, that will hide any tiny scratches. If you are going to use the scored plastic deck, then you'll have to be a little more careful than I'm going to be. But I've got most of that out. Now, if you had a chisel, that would be the easiest way now to get in there and remove that to your chisel, but I don't. But one solution I've found is if you've got a diamond file with a nice square end, you can get in and actually scrape it off. All right. It takes a little bit of work and I, I won't do the whole thing while I'm touring the camera because we'll be here all bloody day. And again, I'm not too worried about bumping those because they get covered up by little um, turrets anyway, little cone plates, all right? So a little bit of damage on those isn't matter. I don't totally wreck them. I will have to be careful of something like um, this little bollard here, right? I think it's called a bollard. Is that a bollard? I think it's a bollard. Um, you know, it's a little thing that they, they tie little ropes to. You've got to be careful of that. So the trick is to use... Um, Use your file in sort of a chiselling action. I'm trying to make... Sorry, everything's sort of wobbling a bit doing this, but that's sort of how it goes. So, away we go, and we'll chisel away at that. All right, I'll get on and get all these done, and then you can see that with a little bit of patience, you can chisel them all out, and then you can get in and file the whole thing flat. And then you've got a surface area that will be very easy for the photo etch to sit against, because the photo etch has little legs on it, see, and they're going to sit down there, except for that one, that one broke off, but that's another story, doesn't matter, I've got most of them, lost one, uh, and I'll show you why, because there's um, not my usual folding methods, in fact there's a whole new method of applying photo etch with this, compared to any of my other videos, we're going to break all of my rules and do something completely different, alright, I'll get on, I will cut and then chisel out all of these, and then I'll show you how we fit the photo etch. Just over half an hour later and I have basically cut out, you can't see it can you, I've got that thing in the way, I've cut all that out. All right. Now I'll put that piece back on because we need that as a former and a guide to put these little pieces of photo etch in. Now everything we're going to need for this particular set of bulkheads are all here on fret number one of the P from Edward. As you can see, there's a big gaping hole here. Well, that's the ones that I put on the other side that are already done. So, all of these will go on this side. Now, if you read the instructions, which is usually advisable, but in this case, their numbers kind of jump around a bit, and I couldn't see how those parts would fit in the order that they set. It made more sense to put them, all of those pieces, on that side, and they fit it perfectly. So I'm going to do the same here, all of those pieces, because the only bloody ones I've got left, of course, and they're going on this side. So just have a look at that, and you can make up your own mind, but um, I didn't agree <laughs> with the numbers they were using. They're using the right numbers, but they're kind of all mixed up. Okay, so once you establish which part goes where, uh, it's fairly easy to proceed from there. Now, we're going to do something new, and something different, and something exciting this time, because in the past, when I've talked about PE, I've advised glass or something fairly firm and my razor blade to cut in. And I've used my folding tool 
Alright. And I've used the razor blade. Just just covered up there so that I don't have an accident and accidentally cut my ears off. Right, so we'll put those aside. So what's new, what's different, and what are you on about Harry Houdini? Well, here it is. A new toy. This is a Zuron, it's spelled with an X, X Uron, PE cutting tool. And this is rather mighty and rather different. So rather than getting there with a little razor blade and trying to cut things, and this does all that a lot easier. And let me see if I can show this on camera. It's um, going to be interesting to see if you can see what I can see. So there's our first part. All right. Now, just like you would with sprue cutters, you get in with your cutting tool, and it is so sharp and it is so pointy that it just... It's a bit wobbly, I know. Yeah. So that was a bit different, wasn't it? Don't normally do it that way. So we've actually cut the part out. And then once you actually have the part, prior to doing any filing, you can actually get in with this tool and you can cut bits of wayward brass sprue off. Yeah. I mean, as close as I can be here so you can kind of see what's going on, but there's tiny little bits there and this is so fine and so sharp. I mean, coupled with my new micro shears, or shear cutters, whatever you want to call them. I've got two brand new tools which make my life so much easier. I can cut sprue much closer to the parts using my um, my shear cutters, those little mini shimmers. And this little Zuron little fella, it lets me cut out PE and that's done. That might need a tiny bit of filing, but quite often it's ready to go. How easy was that? You hear that rain outside? It is pelting down and it started flooding upstairs again like it did in the storm the other week. So um, yes, I'm having to stop the tape and uh, run upstairs and um, bail out my bedroom and then come back down and do this video. Now that's dedication for you. Anyhow, I digress. Now this tiny little part here is going to fit in there. And um, it simply has to have a little 45 degree fold in there so that the, the little gun turret can sit nicely. So what we might do is just to check spacing, and that's why I've got all this here, is put that in so that I can see the exact space that's got to go in. Now, it has two fold lines. All right, everyone always has a nice little mark on there where the fold lines are. Now this one on this side, that is for the um, foot. That's basically the bottom, so really, let me put it up that way. Pretty obvious because there's a doorway, right? There's a hatch. Hatch. They're not doors. Doors go on hatches. It's a hatch, all right? So that's the foot. So that has to fold up and that's the foot. And then this part folds towards us 45 degrees so that this thing goes in there and that's got a little 45 degree. Look, I'll do it and then it'll become more apparent. So first, we'll fold the foot up. And I can use my little foldy tool for this, but it's, it's hardly worth it because this is really so um, so easy to fold on these fold lines. I was doing most of them by hand um, before. It really is that easy. But anyhow, do a little foldy tool. You haven't seen a foldy tool before, it's what you do. You, you clamp it in, you use your razor blade, and you fold it up. So there we go. So that gives me basically the right angle. So that now has a foot. I don't know how much you're going to see of that, but it's got a little, oh, it's an L shape now, right? So it stands up. <laughs> well, it would, if it could. Just bear with me, it does. Now, the um, this little edge here, it's got to bend in a little bit. Now that's a bit hard to do on the foldy tool when you've already got a fold, so I use the tweezers and just give it a little gentle bend. And it's only got to go to 45 degrees as far as I can tell from doing all the other ones. So it really is not that hard. That's about it. Touch more. That's it, easy as that. So this little piece now is folded and ready for testing in there. There you go, you'll be able to see it a bit more clearly now. There's its foot, there's a 45 degree fold in, there's the hatch. Now that goes in there. Now the reason I have kept the gun turret 
and I've kept this top piece is I can now see how that's going to fit. All right? And the thing also is, there's a little lip on here. I don't know if we can really see what's going on. See, there's a little lip there. That's because that's got to go underneath. But this little part on the top here actually cements to that midship at the top there, that midship deck. So that's how it's going to end up. Now to show you, here's one we did before. <laughs> Alright, so on this side you can see it's cemented at the top of the midship deck there and then that 45 degree tucks under and then underneath there's its foot. Okay, so that's how it all works. And then that leaves a nice little hole there by the time you get them all in for your little gun turrets to set. So keeping that bit of plastic on there I found was helpful to give you something more than this very thin edge to push the part up against plus you'll also get the little 45 degree forming angles okay you'll see them all around here so you'll actually get the correct angles to bend in on um, but I said after a while I realized they were all 45 degrees so it's pretty obvious so that's what I'm going to do now is I'll cut out all those little parts and then each one of them I'll dry fit until I'm absolutely sure the whole thing fits together well Here we are back a few days later and um, yes, the storm was really big. I had a massive flood in my bedroom and I had to clean all that out. And then it took me days to tidy up the whole house and sort everything out until I could finally get back to the Arizona. Okay, now last time I cut out this little piece of photo etch here and I sort of showed you how it would fit. Well, I've gone ahead and I've cut out all the other pieces and I've folded them. And I didn't need to really show you that. You, um, you know, it's all the same sort of thing. But I did comment um, at one time how... Everybody's photo etch seemed to jump around in the numbers, and yet I went through the sprue, the photo etch sprue, and I just did all the ones on the one side. Now, you can do that, and I've managed to do it, and you can get away with it, but um, it is a mistake. Now, if you can see there's a little bit of photo etch here, um, there's actually the mark, the fold line. Right, it's not just a crease, it's actually a scored line there by Edward. Now normally that scored line should be on the inside and you fold the photo etch up because when you use your photo etch tool you have the scored lines face up to you and then when you bend well basically you end up with a folded bit on the inside right. Now because I've been Harry and <laughs> done whatever I wanted to do and went hang on no, all these parts should be in a line well guess you can do it that way and um, I had the same problem here see there's one with the line on the outside, but then these ones don't. All the line is on the inside, okay? So just be aware of that, that you may need to follow Edward unless you really know what you're doing. I sort of already could see how the parts were going to fit and I realised how they needed to fold. So I folded against the, um, the line. Now, when you do that here with the feet, if you're not careful and you fold against that line, um, it fractures it. Because it's already been scored and split on one side, where well, it fractures it on the other side, and the piece falls off. And that's exactly what happened over here with this one. All right. So rather than doing a Harry Houdini and trying to be too smart, follow Edward and put them in the order they say, <laughs> and your life will be easy. You can still do it my way if you're if you're obstinate, arrogant, and stubborn like I am. Anyhow, now the um, these little parts are in. They've been dry fitted. Okay, I wouldn't cement them to the base. I'm going to cement them to the top because they really need to mate up the top. And the logic with that is with the base, with the bottom here, because I've got that little wood veneer deck going in, it's going to take the tiniest fraction of, um, of extra space and it's going to give you a little bit of leeway for these to sit. So they can sit slightly up, slightly down. It won't matter because that wood veneer deck will hide a tiny gap. But at the top, where it needs to join... Here, that needs to be absolutely flush. So that is where you need to glue. You need to make sure all those edges are perfect. And as I said, the bottom will sort itself out because you've got that little bit of leeway with the, um, the wood deck. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take all those little pieces and I'm going to put them on here. Oh, there's one more thing I need to show you. These doorways, hatches, right? Now, on the back side, there will be a bit of plastic in the way that you'll need to get rid of. Now, you could do it afterwards. I actually did that one afterwards and it was a bit of a mess. But you could do it beforehand. And the way to do it beforehand is like this. Let's um, let's find one. So, um, 
here's our piece and you put it in, test it, right, so it goes here right, and you know it's got to sit up hard against that 45 degree angle there and hard up against the plastic so away you go and then you sight it and you go, oh no, look, there's a bit of plastic there okay, so all I would do then is take my trusty pencil and this is a bit hard to do on camera, but trust me, this does work. So, right, take my little trusty pencil, and in there I would then mark with my pencil. I need to remove that. So when that comes away, I'll have a tiny little pencil mark. You probably can't see it on camera, but it is there. There's a tiny little pencil mark there, and that tells me I need to remove. There's just there, right? I need to remove that much plastic to make sure that hatchway is free. So that's what I'm going to do now, is I'll go through and I'll clean out all the hatchways. There's only two or three of them. It's really not that hard. Make sure that there isn't any obscuring plastic there, because um, I want to have my little hatches sort of a jar open. And then we will CA glue in all the photo etch pieces, and we're done. All that work and all that effort has led up to this last moment where the photo etch parts are going to go into the space and be cemented to this basically midship deck here. Okay, now I've got slow zap, which is what I prefer to use instead of super glue because this gives me a little more time and it's slightly thicker and easier to work with. So we'll get that out and we'll get a tiniest bit of that onto plastic lid. I used to put it on my little bingo tickets, but I ran out of bingo tickets and then I found it was actually easier to do it this way and a few other people do it that way as well. Now. I've already dry fitted, I know everything fits, and it should be just a matter of mating them up to the correct positions on here. So for this very first one, that tiny one there, I know it has to fit here, and I've already cut out the, um, the little hole for the, uh, the hatch. We know it's got to fit in there, we don't need much. Just enough. The lights around here will make this actually dry a little bit quicker. So I've got them up quite bright for the video. So what I'll do is pop this there because it's really not going to touch anything. Now I need to get that part in. This is where something like a wax pencil is really handy. Right, so we'll get it roughly in place and then using our wax pencil push it up into exactly the right position getting it vertical That's the beauty of this app, you get a little bit of time to work. So there we go, I think that's in. I think she's in. Okay, I'll, um, yeah, it feels tacked in. So the angle's right, yeah, she's in. All right, well we have all the pieces of photo etch on there. And I said I've made them flush with the top. That was the Amex size. Made sure they fit around the, um, the little turrets. Everything's working fine. Now it's the back part here. This one's a little harder because unlike all the other ones that, that sit up over the lip of the deck, this one sits underneath the deck. So I think the easiest way to do this would be actually from this side, um, which is sort of gambling, that we actually just pull, put it in place and glue it in like that. So I'm going to try that now. And that went in very easily. All I had to do was get it flush with the, uh, the side of the deck there and made it up against the rear bulkhead. That went in fine. So this entire assembly now will fit very nicely over there, over all the, um, the turrets. We're done. That's all the PE bulkhead finished. And um, now I can put the wood deck in, see how it looks. Well, this is where we've got to. We're finally starting to get something happening. So this actually looks a bit like a battleship. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the, um, the photo etch in there, once that's all painted up and everything's um, finished off in there and cemented down, because this is only still dry fitted. You know, this is, um, everything's just sitting there, waiting for me to finish it. <laughs> but look, we've got the semblance of a battleship. It's starting to happen. And uh, next time I'll work on the barrels and we'll build all the turrets up. We'll put in the metal barrels, put the PE on those, show you how that's all done or how I do all that. And, um, and putting the little metal barrels in here too will mean finally I'll get to a point where I could take the wood veneer off and spray this entire um, 
grey top half, right? And I previously thought of doing this as a waterline and not having the bottom in, but I've seen some great pictures online of some of these really weathered up, this, um, this particular model. And I'm leaning now towards actually having the whole hull in and doing it as a full sort of museum display ship rather than doing a diorama. Anyhow, that's, um, that's what we've got to with the, uh, the Arizona. I, I hope there's something in there for you if you're building this kit and you're wondering how to get through things. If you can possibly learn from some of my mistakes or, or pick up some tips and hints that, um, that I've, I've managed to show you. Or maybe you know something else. Let me know. You know, maybe you know a better way. I don't know. It's all about sharing. I'm not an expert. I don't think any of us are really experts. If we think we are, we've we got our fingers up our bums, really. <laughs> we're modelers, we're enjoying it, and we're sharing. And that's what my YouTube channel is all about, right? It's just about the fun of modeling. And um, I'll share with you and show you what I do. And that's exactly what my channel is about. And I will waffle sometimes and I will go off subject. Who cares? You're not paying me. It's my channel. I can do whatever the hell I like. <laughs> all right, well, if you manage to make it all the way through to the end, <laughs> Um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you'll like, subscribe, and comment, um, you know, interact. That'd be great. And um, might even see you on Facebook. I've got a page there as well. There's a URL thing here. Whatever. And um, you can always join my group, Fock on the River Counters. <laughs> okay, that's enough for now. It's goodbye from Harry Houdini, and it's Hooroo from Australia. Mm -hmm.